St. John Damascene. Your priests, O Lord, shall be clothed with justice. Your holy ones shall ring out their joy. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We welcome you today as we, we come to the end of our, our weekday Masses on this first week of Advent. You know, our, it's amazing how fast Advent will go by. We want to use every day that we have just to grow closer to Lord, to the Lord and, and welcome him at Christmas time and all the days of our life. Today we celebrate St. John Damascene who had a, a great devotion to the icons of the church. And so if you've ever seen an icon, it's a painting or a religious type of um, uh, figurine to show um, the beauty of, of the saints that have passed or of Christ. Um, anything dealing with icons, today is the one that fought for them and fought for their value. He's one of the ones that wrote a book on the Greek fathers and is also known for his poetry. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that we may be helped by the prayers of the priest, St. John Damascene, so that the true faith which he excelled in teaching may always be our light and our strength. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord God, But a very little while, and Lebanon shall be changed into an orchard, and the orchard be regarded as a forest. On that day the deaf shall hear the words of a book, and out of gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. The lowly will ever find joy in the Lord, and the poor rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. For the tyrant shall be no more, and the arrogant will have gone. All who are alert to do evil will be cut off. Those whose mere word condemns a man, who ensnare, who ensnare his defender at the gate and leave the just man with an empty claim. Therefore, thus says the Lord, the God of the house of Jacob, who redeemed Abraham. Now Jacob shall have nothing to be ashamed of, nor shall his face grow pale. When his children see the work of my hands in his midst, they shall keep my name holy. They shall reverence the Holy One of Jacob and be in awe of the God of Israel. Those who err in spirit shall acquire understanding, and those who find fault shall receive instruction. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A response, the Lord is my light and my salvation. The Lord, the Lord is, is my, my light and my salvation. salvation. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? The Lord is my life's refuge. Of whom should I be afraid? The Lord is my light and my salvation. One thing I ask of the Lord, this I seek, to dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, that I may gaze on the loveliness of the Lord and contemplate his temple. The Lord is my light and my salvation. I believe that I shall see the bounty of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord with courage. Be stout-hearted and wait for the Lord. The, the Lord, Lord is my light and my salvation. salvation. Please stand.
Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. As Jesus passed by, two blind men followed him, crying out, Son of David, have pity on us. When he entered the house, the blind men approached him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I can do this? Yes, Lord, they said to him. Then he touched their eyes and said, Let it be done for you according to your faith. And their eyes were opened. Jesus warned them sternly, See that no one knows about this. But they went out and spread word of him through all that land. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. December is kind of a month where it can be very dark and we can have various snowstorms and even that just even start, you know, and, and snow that comes and it becomes almost a dead time of the year, although we wait in hopefulness. And it can be a time that people talk about seasonal problems that they have, you know, and, and struggles that they have with Advent time. But the beauty of this scripture is all about seeing and allowing God to conquer our fears. An interesting time. I had a funeral Wednesday. I have a funeral today. That's why there's no Eucharistic adoration. I have a funeral tomorrow at St. John Vianney. And on Sunday night, I do a chapel service for another funeral. And I can tell you two other people that died. Very unusual week to me. And I could say, wow, it's dark, right? And I can feel that way. I did the um, vigil prayers at Sam's Wake on Tuesday night. And our responsorial psalm was, was this Psalm 27. Any wake you ever go to, today's responsorial psalm, that's the one. I did the same responsorial psalm last night at about 4.35 o'clock at, at Amagon. Tonight I'll be at Canaan's doing this exact psalm about quarter to seven tonight. And then on, two, on Sunday night as well. And it, it, it shows us all that even in the darkness, Christ is our light. That's why the responsorial psalm reads, the Lord is my light and my salvation. And as that psalm opens, it says, whom should I fear? If we have God on our side and the Lord is our light and our salvation, we can conquer anything. No matter what happens when we see it dark outside, no matter what happens when the storms may come and the snowstorms, every week, as long as we keep preparing, Christ's light will come into the world. And if we have God on our side, we can do anything. Take a look at our first reading. It speaks of the blind being able to see. And so piggybacked on that is our gospel, our gospel from Matthew. And when these blind men are coming to Jesus and they're saying that they want to they want to be able to see. They're blind, so they're in complete darkness, at least physically. They're able to see the light of the world because they're able to approach him. Imagine moving around with the lights off all the time. I mean, when the electricity goes off, there's not much we can do, and if it's later in the day, you're ready to go to bed. But the last thing you want to do is approach a stranger because you're, you're handicapped in that way, you know, to be able to, to get near him, to be able to see him. But these men, these blind men, are not handicapped at all. They see who Jesus is with the eyes of faith. They ask in that prayer, Lord, be my light and my salvation. Let me see. And when we talk about fears, their fears are totally conquered. They come to Christ and they ask him, and he allows them to see. Today, as we begin the day, we begin a day in which we hear this psalm, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom should I fear? May we keep that in mind all the whole day. Because no matter what is going on, I'll be praying these prayers with a grieving family tonight at quarter to seven. Did it yesterday afternoon. 
These are the prayers of the church. But there's a beauty to knowing that the Lord is the light. That's where we travel to. And we have Don's funeral here at 10 o'clock, and a casket is laid out in this center aisle. At his feet is that paschal candle, showing that your feet walk toward the light. That's our church teaching. If it was a priest, it's reversed the opposite way, because the priest who's deceased is actually can celebrating the Mass, or celebrating the Mass in that banquet table. But to a, a lay person, their feet are right by that paschal candle, and it shows that's the way we want to walk in life and also in death, in this world and in the next. Christ is our light and our salvation. With him, what do we have to fear? May we take courage knowing that he's there with us, and no matter what's going on, Lord, let me see. Let me see what's ahead. Let me see what my fears are. Let me see how I can move through those fears. Let me see what I should do in grief, in, in happiness, in victory and defeat. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Today he lets the blind see. May we work on our own lives. And wherever we're blind, wherever we're blind, may we come to the light. Please rise now for the intercessions. As servants, we now bring our prayers before the Lord, knowing that in peace, God can provide all that we need. For the church and all the faithful throughout the world, for you and I, may we continue to grow in a holiness and a unity and build up that body of Christ, starting with ourselves, moving to our family, directing it toward our church and building up our world. We pray to the Lord. That the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ and the good news of his coming at Christmas and also at this Mass may spread to all ends of the earth. We pray to the Lord. That the spirits of the lonely, the discouraged, those that grieve the loss of another, um, those that are on their, their last day today, may they be uplifted by the assurance of God's love and God's compassion for us all, we pray to the Lord. We pray for our parish sick list, all those in need of our prayers. We pray for the families of, of funerals that have taken place here, that are, that are upcoming, that have happened in the past, those that grieve the loss of another. We pray for people affected with the coronavirus, first responders and protectors of them, those in hospitals and nursing homes, those that care for them. May we all know of God's healing grace this Advent season and all the days of our life. We pray to the Lord. That Christ may have a place in our hearts and homes and all those gathered here today, we pray to the Lord. For those who have died, today we remember in a special way Anna and Sylvester Braunscheidel. May they and all the faithful departed through the mercy of God, may they dwell in his house for all eternity. We pray to the Lord. And for those prayers that we voice now in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God and Father of light, hear the prayers we offer as we wait in joy and hope for the coming of the Emmanuel. And we ask this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Through the mystery of this water and wine, we become to share the unity of Christ who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. For through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Wash me, Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sin. Thank you. 
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all, his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, the offerings placed on your altar in commemoration of blessed John Damascene, so that as you brought him glory, you may, through these sacred mysteries, grant to us your pardon through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and salvation, and all as it lays may manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory, O Son of the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. O Son of the Highest. Pray in the Advent Prayer of Reconciliation number one. If you have a missalette, it's found on page 23. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and from the world's beginning are ceaselessly at work, so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your spirit, that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Indeed, though we once were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love for your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death, and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on the cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine and once more, giving you thanks, handed the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead, and looking forward to his blessed coming, we offer you, who are our faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, 
and grant that by the power of the Holy Spirit, as they partake of this one bread and one chalice, they may be gathered into one body in Christ who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion with, of mind and heart, together with Francis our Pope. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints, in the halls of heaven, with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy, then freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. In our own indirect way, let us offer each other a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
our act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Blessed is the servant whom the Lord finds watching when he comes. Amen, I say to you, he will put that servant in charge of all his property. Let us pray. May partaking at the heavenly table, Almighty God, confirm and increase strength from on high. In all who celebrate the feast day, a blessed John, Saint John Damascene, that we may preserve in integrity the gift of faith and walk in the path of salvation you trace for us through Christ our Lord. As a reminder today, we will not have Eucharistic adoration from 9 to 12 because there's a funeral for Donald Weiss, which will take place at 10 this morning. This weekend, when you come to Mass, our Mass schedule is as normal, um, just social distancing and Mass that are required. We will um, also do a blessing of ornaments, and if you could bring an extra ornament and place on our tree, we'll have people to help you put them on the tree, and it's a way of just bringing in an Advent season that's always on the cusp of a Christmas season, but if we don't do the tree starting, we'll, we'll never have an opportunity to enjoy it for the Christmas season. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God.